Or, or no? Yeah. This meeting is being recorded. Okay, welcome uh, to this uh, uh, new talk in the TRE talk and tremor series. It's great to see many of you again. Uh, welcome, Sara. Uh, this talk is by Sara Sorika Mitic, uh, who is a global TRE uh, uh, certification trainer and a medical doctor, and also a body oriented trauma therapist. She's been a great colleague of me for uh, 10 years now, and uh, uh, it's a pleasure to, to uh, cooperate uh, with Sara. Every time I have a question regarding uh, medical issues and theory, she uh, is the one I ask. And I should just, uh, uh, if you have any questions regarding medical uh, issues and theory uh, to, uh, to book a session with Sara, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to have a consultation. So um, welcome, Sara. Would you like to, uh, to start? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Hello to everyone. Thank you to being here. Thank you, Hans, for this meeting. I'm coming to speaking about medical trauma. Trauma, uh, hidden trauma, we can see the best, the best name for that, hidden trauma. But uh, all of us living, uh, oh, the stop it, I mean, how they're going? We're living 10 uh, last year, a practical, a lot of people speaking about trauma. So we can say that we're living in trauma-informed time. What is a trauma practice? That is a couple of definitions about that. Dr. Peter Levine, father of somatic experience, say that the trauma is the most avoided, ignored, denied, misunderstood, and untreated causa of human suffering. But between all trauma, medical trauma is practical, most avoided, ignore it. We're coming to speak more about that and why is this situation today? A trauma is, is each individual experience an unpleasant event or event over time that overwhelming our natural defense mechanism bonded up with the sense of horror, helplessness and hopelessness when instinctive protective reaction occur. That is very important to say that trauma is a very personally, very individually experience. What is happened inside on us as a result of what happens to us? All of you know that people are going, are going to war and the coming back, and only 20, 30% of them are coming to develop PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome, very, uh, very nosely for veteran situation. But only 20, 30%, not all, not all people. Why? Because trauma, and who coming to develop trauma is very dependent from our genetical and epigenetical condition. So both of them is very important to develop trauma. Trauma, very, very briefly, I will, uh, I will make a little bit of difference between stress and the trauma. Stress is practical normal part of our life or normal reaction of our body that is adjustment response to everyday uh, uh, challenging in, in the life. But every time we going over window of tolerance, the coming to develop trauma. If we have, of, co of course, a uh, condition for, or for that. So that is important, that is important to know. That is a little bit difference between stress and trauma. But why is it important to speaking about trauma? Because trauma is disconnection, a result of separation from other people, from ourselves, practical from the world. In this situation where we are disconnected from our tooth, from our body, we can't have 100% function. We can't have very good, very good conclusion, or et cetera, or et cetera. 
therefore it's very important to speaking about trauma about condition where people are being affected of trauma or how we can prevent that that is couple of uh, we can we can speaking about primary trauma this is trauma our personal experience but we can speaking about secondary trauma that is very important for for all people uh, do, uh, working with other people with suffering they transfer from other people with suffering of there we can speaking about first responders medical staff witnesses all trauma therapists know what is the transfer from from people suffering from other people so of course we must remember at a suffering of child, of member of family, can affect it parents, family members, friends, or etc. etc. So we have primary or secondary trauma. In the last time, coming a lot of lot of definition or the of a, a lot a lot of view on the trauma. So from 2021, Sarah Gross, my Grossman say that we can speaking about individual trauma, interpersonal trauma, or collective trauma. So that is a different view, but that is the practical of the same. In somatic experience, we have uh, we have spoke about trauma with high intensity, the part of the middle intensity, and the low intensity. Trauma with very, very high intensity is practical pre and the perinatal trauma. Fetal distress, birth trauma, early surgery, anesthesia, high fever, suffocation, shocking drowning, or etc. etc. All already here, we can speaking about trauma develop or occur in the medical settings, and especially during during birth trauma. I'm anesthesiologist and we all of you know that uh, at people can be very, very afraid uh, from anesthesia and they're going in the in anesthesia and they lost all control of feeling helplessness or hopelessness. So I have met people with claustrophobia. The people have had uh, they have had anesthesia in child out time and anesthesia uh, anesthesi uh, anesthesiologist. Uh, pressed oxygen mask of faces the, the, the child. Or oh, only that there was a reason to develop to, uh, to, de to develop claustrophobia. Today in, uh, we know about that and the oxygen mask it is not present of the faces to uh, to patients, but a little bit over. Sometimes people can take self oxygen mask for avoid this situation with press and with practical suffocation or etc. or etc. So during only anesthesia, we can make a lot of condition to develop medical trauma to client. I coming to speak about that a little more. International, International Society for Traumatic Stress Study make one definition about that, what is a medical trauma, or they say that medical trauma is emotional and the physical response to pain, injury, serious illness, medical procedures, and frightened treatment experiences. There are a lot of different experiences related to illness, injury, or medical treatment that can be difficult, uncomfortable, or frightened. A sudden life threatening illness or injury and the related treatment, shock and feeling out of control with receiving a scary diagnosis, especially in this situation, how we can say, for how we inform client about one wow. diagnosis. Life changing complication or problem during and after, after medical procedure. I coming to speak about that or how every procedure can make practical and complication or problem. Unaccepted medical intervention, such as needed an emergency intervention, or et cetera, or et cetera. 
Then other definition, a practical medical trauma is trauma that occur from direct contact with the medical settings and develops through a complex interaction between the patients, medical staff, medical environment, hospital environment, and the diagnosis and procedural experience then can have powerful physiological impact due to the patient's unique interpretation of the event. There we can see personally interpretation on the event, also in physiological stress and trauma reaction. Medical trauma consider the context in which the trauma is happening. It looks at the healthcare system where patients are exposed to potentially traumatic event, like medical gaslighting or mistreatment, painful or invasive procedure, layering bad news, a stressful hospital environment. In the, this picture, you can see uh, at, uh, you can see when doctors speaking or telephone or don't observe uh, clients. They can be very very stressful for 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 patients. Often, those experience medical trauma discuss how the event is intervened with racism, ableism, and sexism. The acute power differential felt in the patient's provider relationship, discrimination based on weight. The moralizing of the health, for instance, explicitly or implicitly attributing illness to a patient's moral failing. And especially, we have this situation with, 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 uh, with speaking about obesity, a client with, with higher, higher uh, weight. So, that is a very important to know that medical staff can. Uh, we can make a lot of trauma with moralizing. So we often say, yeah, we are very badly patients. You are badly patients. You don't thinking about yourself, so you don't thinking about, about me. So labeling them the bad patients when they have difficulty managing a chronic illness, or we know what, for example, a diabetic uh, needed and, and diet. Well, that is very difficult to, uh, to make that day. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, 20% of, of patients in, in the hospital report are they having experience in that last one instance of discrimination while receiving care and the medical help. That is too much. That is too much. That is very, very, very important uh, to know. In, in my country, we haven't uh, any, any, any uh, research about that. And during a, a preparation for this lecture, my, my, my people around me so say, oh, 20%, only 20%. No, this is 70% to us. <laughs> so I don't know, but that is, that is a terrible. So medical trauma is this franchise trauma, unrecognized trauma, undeserving trauma, not accepted as trauma. Why? Why is this situation which we already beginning to speaking about trauma in the light? We give one big plus to trauma today, but not to medical trauma. Why? Because we we working with comparison. Which comparison are we, which comparison I speaking about? Comparison between to have one cancer diagnosis and diagnosis when you can lose your, your life, you can dead. And complication during treatment of, of, of this cancer. So you are lucky. You survive it. Other people have it worse, but you're speaking about one complication. What is one complication? For example, that is a complication for breast cancer. And the classical complication is lymph edema or stasis of lymph one, one hand. You can say here and here you can see uh, this woman have a very, very big hand. In this hand can sometimes be five chilo to seven chilo, very different. 
very different. But what happened with this, with this hand? This hand is immobile. You can use, you can't use this hand. You are invalid in, with this hand. But if we're speaking about that, uh, uh, that, that is complication, that is one medical trauma, the medical doctors say, yeah, you are lucky, you survive it. Don't think about that. So that is a big problem. We always, we always speaking about comparison. We make one assessment. What is a bigger to survive it or to be complica complicated free? So it is not fine medical procedure, medical treatment without complication, but that is not sure. That is not sure. We must working to, to make uh, medical treatment uh, uh, without, without mistake, uh, mistake free, complications, complication free. And the other example uh, with, with this uh, assessment, why we don't thinking about medical trauma, but we thinking uh, about our results is birth situation. In birth situation with extreme bleeding, women can lose a lot of blood. Lumen, a woman can be uh, died very closer to died. And the, uh, the situation and the sense that I am very close to die, that this is most and uh, the highest existential trauma. But it is not accepted uh, that is a trauma because you coming to hospital to, uh, to, make, to have baby. So you are lucky. You have result is a baby. And low blooding, it is not... It is not a very big issue. So that is a problem. In the last time in the USA, 35% of new mothers have reported experiencing with bit experiencing with bit, with bit trauma. In my country, I think it is a more. And a lot of other countries can see that they have more, not in Norway. I think Norway have uh, haven't uh, too much because uh, I have worked uh, a uh, very very long time in Norway and we we very very pay attention uh, to interpersonal contact health support of uh, health personnel of uh, contact with with patients. But during emergency uh, section, they can occur uh, trauma. I have one example from my from my uh, my uh, my uh, uh, the therapeutical therapeutical uh, the work. One woman <laughs> had had emergency an emergency section and he was uh, the woken and it is not uh, it is not total anesthesia during section only on the spinal anesthesia and that is a problem in uh, during spinal anesthesia that uh, women can hear all patients or all medical staff speaking about and this woman uh, her at the baby is okay but women have cancer and it is over for women so they coming to working to help child, but not to her. So that is was a catastrophe of the experience for her. Of course, she have uh, we survived all of that, but coming with with very 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 huge existential trauma. We have worked very very long time with that, but today. She is better. <laughs> she is better. I can say 100% very uh, good, but better. And one problem, big problem uh, with, the, uh, with birth is obstetric violence, mistreatment, disrespect of their rights, forced procedure, physical abuse, discrimination. I have. I have had that during during my by birth, so I am witnesses to that. And we can have big big aral for developed trauma in 
intensive care unit for infant and the newborn. I was separated from my from in a new of a child one month. Well, that is more terrible both for me and for my relationship with my child. So we have we've worked with that uh, every day, but every day we feeling that we haven't enough contact. So that is important to know. That is important to, to, to give child to mother, not separated, not separated, but not separated over a long time. They give one contact. And we have cultural consideration and the black women have a high risk for birth trauma. In one October, November, one article coming information and that's Celebrity Selena Williams, Walt Nosley, a tennis player, have had problem during birth. Black women have tendency to develop a complication and pulmonary thrombosis during, uh, during birth. And Selena Williams have had that. What is the symptoms? I can't breathe. I feeling me very badly, but medical staff don't accept it. What Serena Williams say? Serena Williams uh, in say, in says, "Can you take one city or, or research what happened with me?" But anything. The end. The day doing a city and the result was enormously very huge pulmonary pulmonary trauma. And uh, Serena Williams with part in the in the coma in the coming out after 10 days. So that is was an enorm enormously um, existential trauma. Why? Because medical staff didn't believe uh, till black woman. We can take if they <laughs> Uh, is Serena Williams have had and Schlick Stratman, what is with the other woman? I must say that different diagnoses uh, have one potential to occur uh, a trauma and make traumatization to patients. Especially all of you know what cancer is problematical diagnosis. It is very, very, very big tetronic can a client survive it or no survive it? I have had cancer. I was 18 years. I was operated for uh, chemotherapy and, uh, and uh, radiation. And I think every time I'm feeling one little bit things in, in my faces because cancer it is was in, in my faces, they started Again, enormously threatenous. I, I started to be afraid. Of course, today I can reduce that. I can live with that normal, but that is here. All of us uh, the literature say that heart attack can, uh, during care attack, 15% feeling feeling panic attack and uh, needed help after heart attack. During intensive care unit uh, of a stay, patients can develop trauma, and especially patients and the respirator. And during the last time with COVID-19, a lot of patients was part in the respirator and the patients was walking not, without sedation, but can't, can't breathe. So that is a very, very, uh, very big problem. And we can speaking about poor treatment. What is a classical poor treatment? Classical poor, poor, treatment, poor treatment is at medical staff, it is not attentive or sensitive to pass patients' needs or stress level. 
which, which interaction with them or performing procedure. Poor communication can increase a patient's stress level or will ultimately lead to medical trauma. Other common causes medical trauma is when patient is forced to receive a medical procedure without their consent. And even the environment in which a person receives care can contribute to medical trauma. Patients can often feel uncomfortable when they're in hospital or medical setting. They are unfamiliar faces, equipment, question, instruction they are receiving all at once, which can easily become overwhelming. So that is a very important to think about. And a lot of other situations during medical treatment, we don't think that they can occur trauma after that, but especially during my work and the somatic experience therapeut, I have met a lot of clients with the block, uh, in the block, it one haunts, other haunts, one feet, other feet in the back, but don't know why. But after, after uh, treatment and during treatment, they're coming up. At the at she was one and one patients was six months in the hospital with immobilization, back immobilization. So long-term immobilization, long-term separation from parents, family, friends, and normal, normal life. Operation in the sensitive part of the body, hair, lung, lower, back, or throat. I think at today, in a lot of country, people have started to think about that, that separation from child and the parents and the family it is not good. So parents coming in in the hospital, but not in my country. Here is separation today too. But why important to talk about medical trauma? Why is we speaking about that? Intervention with patients who have had a traumatic experience in healthcare sitting is crucial to, pre to prevent a long-term psychosomatic issue to help patients reduce anxiety when seeking medical help in the future. Or well, that is was practical uh, one point where I have worked in my hospital. I have worked in the cancer, <coughs> cancer center in the Oslo, or we have had a lot of child to operation, especially for sarcom. And child have had prothesa and must coming every half years or uh, 10 months to, uh, to make the protesa longer. Of course, they must come in, in anesthesia, but they don't like that. So I have had, I have had uh, uh, the patients that don't run in the hospital. Very similar, very similar to picture here. So this picture, it is not caricature. Uh, that, is, that is a situation I have had in, in my praxis. So what I do, what I can do with that? Well, I have worked with these patients a couple of days to make them safe, to give them a sympathical, a sympathical discharge. And after that, we're going to be, uh, uh, to be uh, we feeling safe in the operation room and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that is uh, important to know because in my hospital, we can have a lot of clients very, very afraid, but we have had procedures to help them, to help them the, uh, to coming over uh, the anxiety or reduce anxiety. So that is uh, very, very important to speaking about that. If clients don't, don't like to coming to control, and avoid a situation uh, to make a procedure to prevent at, at the illness uh, develop more and stop more. So there can be very, very big for, uh, problem for patients. Of course, the biggest problem we have with child because all things occur 
in the child time that make developmental trauma. A set of physiological and psychological response of children and their family, of course, then family too, secondary traumatizing to pain, injury, serious illness, medical procedures, and, or an invasive or frightening treatment experience. Research level 25 to 30 percent develop post traumatic symptoms. The National Child Traumatic Stress Network from the USA in 2020. So that is a practical too much. I haven't, of course, uh, with a person from other country, but that is, is very too, that, that is too much. Why is important to prevent uh, trauma, trauma development in the child time? Because trauma in the child time uh, can make increase or increase at that at this child can develop ischemic attack, stroke, chronic bronchitis or emphysema, diabetes, carcinoma, or other other illness. If child have trauma, trauma, they can be at in the Voxen people have trauma too. So that is important, important to know and prevent trauma. Consciousness memory of every painful event is not necessary for adverse outcome to occur. The descendant neural pathway, brain spinal cord are not well developed in the newborn or resulting in a reduced ability to inhibit nociception. Well, this notception is very, very important. Under treated pain in early infancy can cause an increased pain sensitivity, decreased immune system functioning, increased avoidance behavior, and social hypervigilance. Multiple procedure in, in preterm and the low birth weight infants is well routine newborn medical procedure, health stick, circumcision may alter infants' development. I have a child with six months, the birth, was birth with six months, and the best, the better is not speaking about a lot of complication uh, where she have and the feeling, a feeling today. The going, she going uh, in in the in the freeze every time the coming uh, of the uh, when frightened situation. What is a symptom for child? for child trauma, re-experiencing, rigid, repetitive, and anxious re during play, nightmare, strong reaction to trauma, reminder of triggers, flashback and dissociative episode, less common in young children, but may be observated. Symptoms can be avoidance, numbering, avoidance of, of discussion, of the trauma as well as people, place, things, or situation that remind them of the trauma. Emotional numbing may cause the child to withdraw from family members and from play. Hyperarousal is symptoms. Disturbed sleep, increased irritability, fuzziness, temper tantrum, hypervigilance, exaggerated startle response, and part concentration, Increased activity level are seen of hyperarousal. So risk factor strengths and protective factor impact the trajectory of trauma symptoms, including coping style, social support, frequency of uncontrolled pain, prior to physiological trauma, separation from a caregiver, comorbid grief, puzzling emotional or behavior problems. But very good news is. And today we have a book about medical trauma. The Managing on Physiological Impact of Medical Trauma is a book for Mitchell Flaum, Mitchell uh, and Scott Hall, the coming 2016. This groundbreak book is the first to conceptualize medical trauma and provide mental health and healthcare professionals with best practice for treating such trauma in healthcare settings. 
And October, September, October 2022, in the psychoanalytic therapy network, the comic online, one article from Sasha McBain. This is a clinical psychologist and assistant professor of the University of Arkansas Medical Science. She provided training and consultation to medical service how to implement trauma informed and trauma focused care practices. Here to write, it is it is course, 60 hours course of about that. They can find that in the website of Sasha McBear. So I think that it's a very, a very, a very, a very, a very big steps in the in the treatment and speaking about medical trauma. And more than that, we have trauma informed medical education. So that is important to know in 2020, the coming, the coming uh, implementation, trauma informed medical education with one medical personnel. Of course, that is the only one school, one high school, but I think they can be a very good example to other, uh, to other country or other hospital or other, or other medical institution. Let me stop, what happened there? What we can do to prevent a medical trauma during a medical procedure, uh, during, uh, uh, during uh, uh, the stay in the hospital, we must keep patients safe. We must help them to feel safe. That is the most important of the all. Provide realistic choice and engage the patients in treatment decision they desire. Ask the patients about fear and the worry. Provide realistic reassurance and the hope. Listen carefully for understanding. Ask questions and clarify misconception. Encourage patients to use distraction, relaxation, or other effective coping technique. Encourage patients' family, friends, and supporters to ask their own coping reassurance and support. I have one PhD in the physiology, psychophysiology, with name preoperative psychological preparation of patients for surgery and anesthesia and assessment of care. I take that in 1997. I have had three groups of patients and all three groups I have measured cortisol. All of you know what cortisol show level of the stress. I take cortisol in two points. One point home, and then other uh, home the first time we take the uh, blood, blood analysis to clients, and the other like before operation in the operation table. So what is was the result? In one group, I have treated with very good information very good information about anesthesia, very good uh, information about, about operation, a result of that, and take medical, medical uh, uh, premedication, we say. In this group have had here lowest level of cortisol. Other group haven't anything that is those patients that are coming directly to hospital to be operated without preparation. Level of cortisol was very, very, very high. Or we have, of course, only one, one point for measure cortisol. That is point is in operation table. And uh, group number three, it is classical, classical premedication, people coming to hospital who said, and, and, and they find only uh, one sedative before operation. That helps too, or we have a low level of, of cortisol, especially lower than, than before. But lowest level of stress of the cortisol, it was in the group with very, very good information. So we have, uh, I think, 
the couple of studia about that. But why we don't use that, I don't know. But we must continue to speak about that. We must continue to work in this way. I will show a very shortly uh, film about uh, that, about approach in the, my hospital in the Oslo. How we can work in with child. They can see that we use. Okay, are parents in the operations room? The mother? Så får de efteråt de här Om man har genomgått operation så får de diplom. Den ligger på sängen när de vaknar. Yes, that is was this film. Of course, that is not only one approach uh, with coming to reduce stress for child, but we must start it from one one point. And in anesthesia, we we have we we have started there with child. For example, uh, during uh, during radiation of a child, the child coming uh, we coming uh, to home with music, uh, we can dancing, we can help a child to coming up under on the, on the, on the table, etc., etc. Uh, we must need it time, but time is the biggest problem is healthcare around in the world. So that is a biggest problem uh, to take time to working with with the client with afraid client especially and now i will i will speaking a little bit about that how we can use theory and the medical trauma and uh, how theory can help people with medical trauma all of all of all of you is from theory world and know what theory working with the help body to complete the discharge there was aborted in the time of traumatic or stressful event. Decharge, uh, decharge stress and during long immobilization in the hospital. The tremor and the movement complete the decharge and reduce anxiety, thereby restoring homeostasis. The tremor reduce 
uh, the contracted muscles that were tensed at the time of the stressful event. Especially tremor can help with people after very, very, very long immobilization. And here, very shortly, I'm coming the uh, we, all of you know what is a benefit with use of TRE, but especially with medical trauma after a long time immobilization, we can be speaking, speaking about reduced muscle and back pain, increased flexibility, relief from chronic medical condition, or et cetera, or et cetera. Now, I coming to show uh, a two uh, example, a couple of examples about medical trauma and the solution with TRE. Here it is in theory provider. Uh, it is, was very kind of it to, to make this film. Hi, I'm Johanna Antovic and I'm mother of twins. Um, the doctor has delivered the uh, six actions during uh, the night in the procedure. That was quite amazing for me and I lost a lot of blood. Uh, I wasn't able to stand on my feet for five days. So this medical trauma had a lot of um, consequences on my body and on my experience on my pelvis. So, uh, and the whole that region and the feeling it. Uh, so I was lucky enough to um, get in touch with uh, Dr. Ka Sara Zorica Nitic and Thierry. And Thierry helped me to release the stress and tension that was stuck and to reconnect with my body. And um, I'm, I can say that I have experienced change in interesting reconnection with my body and healthy and enjoyable sex life got back. So um, this is my experience with medical trauma. Yeah. How we can recognize one patient with, with, with back uh, in the freeze? So all of you know that you can have one client with the vibration in the feet, but not in back. And uh, the vibration can come in back at the shoulder, but not in back. So we must all back going up, 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 up. So we must working with include uh, back in the body because trauma have excluded this back uh, from, from the body. So we... Uh, have had a result after we can say five to six session, not immediately, but the coming or result is here. So, and if we're speaking already about birth, I will show and I will uh, I will take a, attention to one position. If you have one woman uh, and the hair very, very open or open fit uh, butterfly position. And you ask her, can you make closure your knee? So woman hear you and try to make that, but after a couple of seconds, coming back. So again, or again, or again. What we speaking about? We speaking about stuck in this position, a must working very careful uh, to help women to going out of the stock. Often that is after one a birth and the birth position with mistreatment where uh, obstetric people low in the knee of the woman and the press and the press. So every moment I have had in this position, the coming reported to me a day actually have had a death. One uh, birth where obstetric personnel lower your knee or press down. So of course, that is not only in the uh, stuck in this position after birth, but think about that if you have women. And I teach prospective theory providers, it always involves that the provider or anyone else is not pos positioned above head, head or client who is not processed for checking. Recently, uh, in theory model one, a student, uh, Carla Sivolki Nerk, the head of another student who was in the process. Uh, that situation triggered unpleasant association from the operating room where people move around the operating table like shadow and the client slowly falls asleep. 
Luckily, we noticed it that and gently brought her back to the state of her and now by grounding her and we reintroduced her into the trembling process, then that spirit took uh, her into your body. So we, 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 we don't know about uh, trauma to people we're working with, but a medical trauma coming up, coming up. Here, it is one picture. I have made that and in of a, and large my theory providers at this is yellow areal it, it is best for position for theory provider here cli a client can see you can hear you don't going in this read RL. Here is picture of my student and my student gave me permission to show that because it is for uh, she, uh, he is very new and this position can make threatening uh, to, to client uh, with low down. So don't go overhead to clients. And now I will show and the last example about medical trauma and working with TRE. I, I have uh, TRE, uh, the future TRE, it is my students now. She have had six years ago diagnostic breast cancer and the last breast. She underwent surgery and the significant residual lump swelling remained on her left arm, very similar to picture I have had before. A result, she could not move her arm. A year ago, she had a terrible traffic accident that actually that arm was broken and operated and with osteosynthetic material and the osteosynthetic material have had very badly positioned and make pain during every, every, uh, 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 every movement. In total, that arm was immobilized for more than five years with a lot of with physical therapists. This woman is a medical personnel self, and he have tried to working with this arm a lot of. But during the work with TRE, the arm reminded immobile, but it started to move after three, four sessions. Today, both her arm and shoulder are mobile, but if it's starting with movement, we can see a little bit immobilization. So how here and a little, and the film, I wasn't very good to make this film, but I think they can be useful. You know, So here started to move right hands, not left. Left was immobile. I ask him to stretch, to stretch hands. They can be more uh, better for Israel for all of you. But they can see at the right hands move, but uh, left, no. And I use cognitive switch and ask left hand, what happened? Can you ask your, uh, your left hand what happened? Yes. Very good. Vibration coming in the left. Very good. It's okay that for you, Maya? Yeah. Maya going over pain she have had, but she haven't pain actually now. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. What happened with the right hand? So I switch too much immobiliz mobilization and movement from okay. left to right. It's okay. 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 So that this was example how 
immobilization uh, we can't continue to be uh, shortly immobilized, but if we help them, the coming movement in, in this hand tool. So Maya actually now can take hand of it over. That is, was very, very difficult before, before that. I think that Maya is uh, here and uh, probably can, uh, we can give and serve herself. So that is, was for me uh, before we can speaking about complication in every medical procedure of you know, a lot of things, but that is was shortly, uh, shortly uh, to pay attention to our clients if they're coming to theory session and they have, have movement in one hand, but not the other. So think about that to help to switch move from one side to other. And there can be a, that is a consequence of one medical procedure. So thank you for attention. And question, I go going at here in chat, it is no, no question, but I can say that. Thank you very much, Sara, for uh... For this uh, uh, important and uh, extremely informative uh, talk on the topic of medical trauma and theory, also it was amazing to see these uh, examples, especially this uh, woman who had an immobilized arm for so many years. Uh, sometimes we see these types of uh, effects on various things in our training and otherwise in theory practice, but I think this was probably the most uh, amazing uh, history. <laughs> of five years of immobilization coming out. So that's uh, impressive. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, for Sarah? Now we are at the end. So Kate, have a question here. Could you look at it? Uh, it says that uh, her cousin had surgery on his neck, a tumor, and his right arm is paralyzed. He, I wonder if TRE can help with uh, with this do you have any thoughts on that sarah uh, can you can you repeat uh, you know what i have i have problem with uh -huh. think uh -huh. my okay. cousin had surgery on his neck a tumor and his right arm is paralyzed i wonder if he really can help it you you must try we okay. haven't one we haven't one on server 100 percent. anything is theory is 100 percent. but you can try you can try. I have had operation in the neck, or I have had paralyzed uh, of my hands. So theory have helped me. Or theory helped me to reduce uh, to, to reduce uh, pain uh, the uh, pain medication. So try, try. It is not I, 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 <laughs> This is very important to not damage it, but theory can't damage it uh, uh, with that. Um, I was wondering if I could ask a second part of the question because he said that he has um, he's got metal in the neck first of all and then he also says he's he told me he's afraid of trying TRE because he feels vibration in his entire lower body all the time and I told him that maybe TRE can help reduce that vibration I was wondering if you have an opinion about that. Yes, uh, then vibration, it is self-regulation. But, you know, if we have a lot of uh, challenges, uh, there can be self-regulation out of the normal tolerance window. So you must learn how to take control again. So learn how to, uh, to make vibration and the stop. Make yeah. vibration and the stop. So do... So they're coming to have control, self-regulating. So a lot of vibration is outside of the, the overwhelming too. So learn how, learn how to take control. Uh, so you can be very careful, one minute. My, my recommendation, only one minute. And 15 seconds, you, you, you follow what happened in faces to her, what they say, and learn very careful to take control again. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much.
and the com don't come in the result very very quickly but then coming <laughs> yeah, then, then coming uh, the maya have had uh, module one or module two or so a lot of um, uh, session between and in the module two my first time take up uh, the hands right would you recommend for somebody who who's had that kind of medical procedure to actually get them to tremor standing up instead yes instead of like yes okay yes i have had i haven't two i haven't uh the two uh vertebra in my neck <laughs> i'm retired because I, I i have lost that in operation room passions fault to me and uh, and damaged me uh, so i was paralyzed uh, right. so, so after that, I started practical theory. Give me a uh, mo movement back. Mm -hmm. So, but careful, careful, careful. Not press practical. My principle theory: don't press anything. Right. Yeah. yeah. Start yeah. that the better at you stop it and the starting stop it. Uh, starting then give the the go to overwhelming and what you make you make afraid to client. So right. safeness kind with control and the feeling yeah. of control. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you okay. to you. So um, we, we will have a TRE session and a Q&A uh, in 15 minutes uh, for those who have signed up. For that, and uh, Shelly, OK, one moment. Uh, I, uh, and then uh, so it's, it's possible to uh, still to sign up. So I, I'll make a link in the chat. Um, for those who have signed up uh, and have not received the link, we have sent it by e by e email. But you have, if you have not uh, received it, uh, please contact me by email, and I will uh, send it to you. Um, so, uh, so it's also possible then to uh, ask more questions about this uh, topic, and also uh, uh, have uh, some more uh, supervision on that as well with clients and so on. Uh, Shelley, would you like to ask a question? Uh, yeah, I, I am going to be in the next session. So uh, just quickly, just I want thank you so much for your presentation and, and your work. Um, uh, just wondering about the last uh, uh, woman that we saw with her hand. Was that the was that like the second or third time she's been tremoring or is that or is that I, I just, and, and I just wanted to know. Was she just sitting and you got her to shake just by lifting her arms or did she do something before? I don't understand the hands. So what? What? Uh, yeah. Hands. Yes. Okay. So, um, so um, uh, um, uh, okay. Sorry. She, she asked what you did to help her tremor in the arms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Uh, uh, which uh, which steps did you take to to help her tremors in the uh, upper body? Actually, no. For actually, no. For Maya, it is was only that you say Maya took her <laughs> hands and the uh, vibration started because uh, Maya actually now have had a lot of problems in the life, so a lot of spinning and stress in the body. So it is not uh, too much preparation. Okay, and, and was okay. that her thought? It is not too much preparation because he already uh, we have had one a uh, one thing in the life. So 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 that is it is not well. But if you have one client with immobilization very long, five six years, uh, so if you take hands before, this is already preparation for. Uh, for vibration because it is too much that is too much for this client you know she started to move i think last couple of months two three months not more so that is uh, that is it, that is enough that yeah. is enough to starting of course you had used one uh, one uh, uh, in you can see cognitive switch if you say at one hand working or it is not you can be in the flow of uh, it too it is not only that and the other anything so you can ask client to ask this other time what happened mm -hmm. so it is cognitive coming for the other side and the starting vibration too so you, you was witness this is that to maya mm -hmm. so we can move vibration from one side to other side and the help at becoming a homeostasis. Do and both was in the in movement. Hmm. 
So uh, last uh, week we did a session on the upper body and the arms. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if you were there or not, but uh, yeah, uh, it is. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, additional uh, things we can do to to help the tremor spread more throughout the body. So you might know know them quite a lot already, but uh, yeah. Uh, and in the next session, if anyone uh, would like to join, then then we we will. We can look more more on those things and also ask more particular questions on. But uh, but Hans, I can say if we have one client without too much uh, of the tension in the body, like to to Maya. So what you can use, you can prepare it in client with very classical, very very classical ex of exercise only with hands. So I use that very similar to uh, the uh, to butterfly position for feet. And you can see, press your hand and, uh, and relax. Press your hand and relax. You can also take one ball between with your hands and the press, and the often coming vibration, and the often coming vibration. So that is a way to, to prepare uh, over body and hands. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I, I think we need to move towards the end uh, now. We need a small break before the next uh, session. So uh, I would like to thank everyone who uh, participated and uh, who shared their experiences and uh, uh, in the chat. Um, also, also, uh, it's great uh, to uh, connect uh, with people from all over the world and uh, that so many people are interested in these topics and uh, these talks it's uh, motivation to uh, to continue so uh, we will create a, a schedule for next year i'm happy to uh, say that david has agreed to return to come back i do a new actually three more uh, sessions so that that will be great as well and um, uh, we will also have more topics as well we have a uh, one topic in January uh, about the SOAS, uh, which uh, I think will be very, very interesting as well. So uh, thank you very much for uh, tonight. Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, so on for those we don't see again in the next uh, session. And for those we see again, we will have a short break and we will meet at a quarter past the hour. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.